All right. Well, I hope you're enjoying our devotional series this week, the greatest verses in the Bible in reference to fearing God versus fearing man. And if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. We're going to be in today. And, uh, you know, these are all great verses in the Bible. I'd highly encourage you to, you know, maybe jot them down on a note card, maybe put them down on a note in your, your phone or your, your, uh, your iPad, but just take it in, you know, getting the word, chewing on the word. The world is throwing all these ideas at us all day long. They want to make us believe all these things. And Paul would tell us in the book of Corinthians that there is knowledge that the world calls knowledge, but it's actually setting itself up against the knowledge of God, right? The world, the flesh, the devil himself He'll say to you, well, it's okay for you to have a heightened view of God. I'm okay if your view of God gets higher. But I just want to make sure that your view of God is not higher than your view of the world and of man and of man's thoughts. And God has no place for that. Um, you know, uh, man's thoughts are foolishness uh, to God. And uh, here in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Verse 13, you know, Solomon is the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes. And, you know, Solomon was an interesting, an interesting man. He was the son of David. His father, though he had sinned in so many ways, his father David had a tremendous heart for God. His father loved God. His father served God. His father wasn't just going through the motions, but his father would pour out his heart to, to the Lord. If you read the book of Psalms, the Psalms are all songs that King David wrote and sang to the Lord, you know, mostly in private. They, they, were, they were songs that he wrote to the Lord, praising him for who he is, pouring out his heart before God. That was Solomon's dad. You know, all of us, I think, would desire to have a dad like David. But we see here with Solomon, you know, though he wrote much of the Proverbs, uh, he didn't actually apply a lot of this wisdom himself. And now we see here in Ecclesiastes, this is the end of his life, and we see with Solomon that he finally is figuring it out. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, he lifted his head above the horizon, above what was on the horizontal, and he lifted his eyes to the vertical. He lifted his eyes to the Lord. In Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, he says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God... And keep his commandments, for this is man's all. I'm going to read that to you again. Ephesians chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Solomon's saying at the end of the deal, at the end of all human knowledge and all human understanding, if it doesn't lead you to this wisdom, Right? Solomon had asked God for wisdom when God had appeared to him early on in his life. He says, you know, I'll give you anything that you ask. And Solomon says, give me wisdom that I may lead your people well. And at the end of his life, he really gets a hold of wisdom. And he says, this is the conclusion of the whole matter. Listen, if you and I aren't living like this, if we're not realizing this, but we think we have this secret wisdom or this secret knowledge, you know, so much that's being propagated in the world today, if you take it in, if you believe it, if you believe what the world is saying, fear this, or the world saying, you know, this is the real problem, it's, it's, a, it's a color problem, it's, it's racism. No, no, that's not the real problem. It's not. Sin is the problem. Sin is the problem. The wages of sin, it's still death. And God, whether you know it or not, he knows what's best for you, and he loves you. He loves you so much. And Solomon says, this is the conclusion, fear God. Fear him. Stop fearing man. Stop fearing man's ideas. Stop fearing the things man says to fear. It only brings a snare. Fear God and keep his commandments. You know, Exodus 20 gives us the Ten Commandments. God says these are good things, the tender commandments I've heard him be call, uh, referred to as. The tender commandments. You know, every one of the Ten Commandments are not bad. They're good. You know, if you think, oh, God is so, so rigid and so judgmental, so intolerant. No, no. God knows what's best. He knows what's best for you, and he knows 
what's best for me. And because he loves us so much, because he loves us, he's going to tell us the truth about humanity. And he tells us here, these are the Ten Commandments. This is what's best for you. Fear God, keep his commandments. And it says, for this is man's all. This is man's all. This is what's going to satisfy you. And I pray today that you would fear God, keep his commandments. If you fear God, you will care about what his word says. You'll, you'll care less about what the world says, what, the, what man and their credentials say. And you'll say, you know what? I'm going to fear God. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to respect God in his commandments. And when man's word contradicts God's word, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the Lord. I'm going to believe him. And I pray you would do that today. Father, bless your people. Lord, as we take this time this week to consider the greatest verses in the Bible in reference to the fear of the Lord, God, may you teach us. Holy Spirit, may you teach us the fear of the Lord. As Solomon says, this is the end of it all. Fear God and keep his commandments. And Lord, may we do that even today. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.